God bless you, especially about that day that you're from Tim Mosa. Expect to have a great day. We're going to rejoice in the Lord. We wait for just a moment. Now the ones that are coming in to be able to come and sit down and worship with us. This is the day the Lord has given us. It's in rejoicing. It. Great things are in store for God's people. So come to ready. Get to worship ready to sing. This is really good ready to worship. And we're going to have a great time. Because today is the day the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice it. So God bless you. We take such a moment. Give us a chance to get everybody around. Get around there. Your, your TV, whatever you how we need to use it to watch it today. And let's go our Heavenly Father. Right? God bless you.
and not the church building with individuals. You need to find the fire and the power of God within your life. You need to desire God in such a tremendous way to say, it doesn't matter who can my way, I can indeed do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. So once I pledge this, once I make the promise to God, I will do full for you, clear upon my heart, man, it just began to rain. You know that song we used to sing, it's beginning to rain, and people, it has poured. Right after that, my mom got real sick. I was in Houston for three weeks. Two of those I couldn't even see, was in the hospital. And uh, we hung in there, hung in there, hung in there. Then I had to leave because I got sick. I had to come home. I couldn't finish what I started there. But hey, God's in control. And every day, mom keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So I say, okay, Jesus, we got a victory. We got a victory there. And then we're going along. I'm trying to get back on my feet with my health. And we came here yesterday and we are doing the tremendous, I mean, God bless us in a great way. We're not going to take away what happened, what, you know, what happened with Ceci to, and say no because we glorify God because we saw a miracle here yesterday. We watched a miracle happen. I went to go pick up the food at the, at the back where we pick up our food. And the pastor that said, Pastor, I'm so sorry. Uh, the three trucks didn't arrive, only one truck arrived. We can only give you one pallet, which means 70 boxes of groceries. Well, I mean, free. What can you say? I can argue that. Okay, we're good. We're good, brother. Load us up. Load us up. I came here. Right around, we sat down and started powwow. Said, okay, we promised. We had promised 200 and 200, almost 220 boxes of groceries. We started making phone calls. Hey, sorry, this happened. Everybody was very good about it. We cut you down from five to one, and we started cutting people down. And you know, everybody cooperated very well. We're fine with that. I'm sitting in my office having a Talk with Brother Wood, we were having an exchange there in my office with my phone rings. And a great brother, thank you for your encouragement. He said, uh, Pastor, take it. Take it. So I said, okay. I mean, I got the phone and it was a gentleman, a pastor also said, Pastor, you still have your big old truck there? I said, yeah. He says, well, there's food at this number. Call this number, there's food there. I said, okay. I hung up and I called the number and I said, hey, uh, yeah, uh, I, he gave me this number. The pastor gave, pastor gave me this number, said that there's food there. He said, yes, we do have food. I said, well, we have a pickup truck and we have an 18-wheeler with refrigeration. He says, bring the 18-wheeler. I said, okay. So I came out of the meeting in there and, and then a brother uh, that helped us all day. See, that he got to me too. But, uh, ah, Adas. I said, we stood there and talked about it. He says, Pastor, it was only three of us in because some had already left. He said, Pastor, let's make it happen. Come on, Pastor, let's make it happen. He invited me to go for it. So Sandra and Sean, they got out of the truck and they took off. When they came back, people, we had an 18-wheeler. Packed with food. I mean, packed. I mean, we had so much food out there. And we're in the middle of all that, and it was hot out there, believe me. It was really, really hot. And people were working. And the great thing about it is that as people came to receive food, they get off the car and start donating their work, too, to help us unload the truck. We had a lot of help. A lot of people came for food, then got out of their cars and started helping us. Chago came to pick up his, their, their uh, food for their family, and he stayed the whole day. He went from staying here just to pick up the food, and he stayed the whole day. I mean, he stayed longer than Pastor. When Pastor left, he was still here. And I don't know, he's sitting here, he might have stayed all night, I don't know. But, <laughs> but I know he was one, and, and then some people left and came back to help us, and really, really, it was going good. And along the line, as we were doing this thing yesterday, sometimes they'll call me, Pastor, Pastor, come over here, and I come over there, and here's a person who needs prayer. He wants you to pray for him. And I would pray for him in their car, you know. One lady said, Pastor, I'm sick. I don't want to die. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. I mentioned her, prayed with her. So I started walking down in that direction to the cars to just greet some of the people. And uh, because they wouldn't let me work. These people would let me pick up No, no. no. You, you, you wouldn't know it was a pastor. No, they're taking care of me. I was walking down meeting people and say, Pastor, Pastor, come, come, quick. So I thought it was somebody else that needed prayer in the car. So I started walking back down, got to the front car, nobody else. I went, I walked in the door. Right back there. My wife was laid out. She was doing seizures. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. You know? A lot of people came to help us to pray over her. They called the EMS, they came. They, she's in the hospital today. 
she spent the night there to do some testing. The most recent, I heard this morning when I stopped her, and that, that that's a, you know, people are saying, what's she doing in church? I can't visit with her. I can't even, I can't even be there. So I might as well do what God called me to do. Because I know that the enemy does not want these messages to be preached, and we will preach them. We will do what God calls us to do. And I'm sure Ceci understands what has to be done with this message I'm going to share with you today. But uh, the last I heard through this morning, well, last thing last night, she texted me at about, I guess a little past 11 o'clock last night, she texted me and says, this last test really hurt me. I want to go home. And I texted her back, you know, this time you're out in control. You got to stay. You stay until they stay. And so this morning we talked. She's got two more tests going today. She has an MRI in order to make sure that there is no blood clots were formed. And then checking her heart, make sure the blood clots, blood clots don't come down to her heart. So we're checking that out today. If everything comes out good, she's coming home tonight. She'll be coming home tonight if everything comes out good. We know that God's in control. Amen. And I know the enemy's trying every which way to stop what God is going to do. But God's name is going to be glorified. We're going to win this thing. We're going to win this thing. We go through trying times. And I'm a firm believer. i got to practice what I preach. If I can't practice what I preach, I have no business standing behind this pulpit. I have no business telling about God's strength if I can't draw the strength that I need this time. But I know one thing. That the strength that I receive is from the inside out. I found the Lord as my Lord and Savior. He's with me at every moment. And I can indeed say that in spite of everything that's going around me, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. Amen. I have a mission. I have a job to do. I have a calling from God. I have a family. Man, I really appreciate all of you that stayed to the very end. Uh, they would let me come. I mean, they even gave me a, a chauffeur to the hospital. They said, no, no, no. We're going to chauffeur. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I can do that. No, no, I'm going to give you a chauffeur because we want you to eat because I hadn't eaten all day either. He said, we want you to eat on the way to the hospital. So they brought me a hamburger. And I have to confess, I just took out the meat because I was afraid there was onions in there. I had no idea who they ordered the hamburger for, but I was going to eat the onions. And I didn't want to ruin my only meal. I wasn't going to ruin it. Having the onion ruin it. So I went ahead and got it. And we had ate. It's there, drove me down to the hospital. Who gave me a... a and he said, no, no, I'm going to stay here. Uh, I'm good, I'm good. No, no, I'm going to stay here. My job is to keep an eye on you. And I'm going to stay here with you. So that's what we did talk about it. When we got word down, how everything was coming down, how everything was getting better, then I went ahead and took Benny home and then came back to the hospital to wait for the hours. Johnny and I sat in the, in the parking lot because that's all you can do now. Sit in the parking lot and wait. And we waited we got our... But well, we got what they say she was going to stay. We said, okay, you might as well go home. We can't do anything here. And that's what we had to do. I'm here with a strict confidence that what God called me to do has to happen. It has to happen, people. We need to learn that your commitment to God can take second place to nothing in your life. I have another commitment tonight that I have to fulfill. Family friend, uh, had family member pass away. Before all this thing happened, I helped her raise their funeral for and everything. I made a commitment to help that family. And I'm not going to walk away. When people are leaning on you, you can't walk away. You can't let them down. That's what I've tried to teach you. That type of commitment. You can't let God down. You can't walk away from God is still within your heart. What you've committed to God, what you've promised to God, has got to happen. And I promise you, if you're committed to God, and you do what God wants you to do, He's going to give you the desires of your heart. You're going to learn to walk in faith. You're going to learn to be strong from within. You're going to understand that, excuse the English, but all hell can break loose. But the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And people, we are the church. We're not just anybody. We're God's children. And as God's children, we've got to stand up for what we believe in. We've got to be strong from within. We've got to go forward with the determination that God's will is going to be done. How many times have I told you we don't have to like God's will, but we do have to accept it. As we go forward in life today, we will learn many lessons of life. But there's nothing so big that you can't handle because God's in control of all things. And we can learn from that. We can become better believers. We can be stronger in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't say, well, because you're the pastor, I'm human like you. I have feelings like everybody else. 
And I know that, I mean, I was trying to say it's calm in front of everybody as possible. When I got home and did my sugar, we were like, I didn't even record, I didn't put it down. Because the doctor said, what happened here? You went from 90 something to almost 400 last night. Is that because I know that when you get a shock of something, your sugar's gonna go up. So I didn't even record it, that. I'll write it off, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna record that because I know what's happening. But you know, all the physical signs, because your physical person are gonna show up. But then there's an inner man. There's a relationship with God that's a lot bigger than what this flesh wants to do. You have a commitment to serve God as God has called you to serve. And when you fulfill your commitment to God, God will fulfill his commitment to you. And not because I'm a pastor, because I'm just like everybody else. I just have a calling that God laid upon my heart, and I came and I come and part of my heart every day to all of you. But I'm trying to teach you a lesson. Because the day's gonna come, I'm no longer gonna be here. But I do want to instill into the minds and hearts of people that I touched how important it was to be committed and to honor God in everything that you do. In the midst of everything, look how God takes care of things, okay? Where do I get stuff like this? And as I was looking last night, because I couldn't sleep, I was looking through my Facebook, through my second Bible, looking at different comments there, and I saw something, I said, oh my God, you know, I punched it, and it was a young lady who was in our church, and she says, many years ago, she sent me a text from Dallas. Pastor, I want to thank you at the age of 16 you trusted me to teach children's church. You are many years later, not teaching kids, but teaching adults in the house of God because of what you did for my life. How you impacted my life. How you blessed my life. That's just who I am. And I check, I say, there's comments like this that let me know that my work is not in vain. That there's other people being blessed by what I do. Of what God has laid upon my heart to do for the last 51 years of my life. You know, I believe and I've said it many times to you. I want to finish like I started, on my head up, with a lot of pride, a lot of joy, a lot of strength. And we have to go through battles. We're going to go through the waters, they're going to come to here, but you're not going to drown. You'll be set through the fire, but you're not going to burn. And when it's all said and done, the name of Jesus is going to be glorified. For people will know it's about who Jesus Christ is in you. And I thoroughly believe today that God's in control. I thoroughly believe that uh, all these things that have transpired in my life in the last month, month and a half, is just attacking me knowing that God's giving me word for the church. And if I'm going to listen to the enemy, I'm a weak. I'm, I don't deserve to stand back here and I'm going to listen. I've got a challenge to deliver to you, my church. Because I say if I can plant the seed and plant the passion in your heart, do what God has called us to do, then this job is going to be so easy, we're going to have so much fun. Fun, Pastor? Yeah, it's going to be fun. When you see souls coming to Jesus Christ, when you see God's working miracles, God doing great things. Cousins from San Antonio came by. Let me show you how confident I was on my day. Robert called me and says, Hey, uh, cousins from San Antonio are in town, Dad, they went to get there. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'll be down here in a couple of hours. We were only dealing with a 70 boxes original. Come on down. Pick me up, we'll go out and eat. Little did I know what was going to happen after that, right? So they came down, and when they saw the thing, they walked in here. Both my cousins said, oh, man, I feel something awesome in this room. They said, the revival is coming. Yes, it is. I said, and I have a job to do. i got to get my church ready for revival. Amen. My people have got to be ready to go to battle. We can't harvest what we don't have. We're either part of the revival or we're going to be left out. And it's all to the commitment of people like you. To carry on the torch and the calling of Jesus Christ to touch the lives of people. Because we need to understand the greatest weapon God ever had in his kingdom were the believers in Jesus Christ. If you study the history of the church history, primitive church, the greatest weapons were not Peter and John. Were they more the disciples? You know what they were? The most souls? Persecution. Really, Pastor, when persecution came to church, I mean, they spread, they started running for their lives. And wherever they went, even though they were running for their life, they shared Jesus Christ, and people were getting saved by the hundreds, by the hundreds. By the pastors, no, sir. By the disciples, no, sir. By believers in Jesus Christ. And that's who you are. That's exactly who we all are, believers in Jesus Christ. So when I look about what God wants to do, 
We talked about what motivated me to this message. We found it in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse number 17, where Peter says, upon that right after the day of Pentecost, he delivered his message, and he tells the people, in the latter days, I will pour out my spirit upon all of this. That's what motivated me. To understand as you look at what's happening around us, all the senseless things that are happening around us, all the things that are being fulfilled by Bible prophecy, there's one, there's one, because you can really freak out at someone like wars and rumors of wars and, and uh, uh, earthquakes, all the kind of things. Oh, these are all bad. There's one good in the middle of all that. In the latter days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's the challenge to the church. Says, Before I come, I'm giving mankind one last chance to get their stuff together. And the vessel I need to use is the church. So if we have the knowledge of the word of God, and we know that what is coming, and we understand what the mission is. And we see what God wants out of our lives. What are we waiting for? What holds us back to do what God has called us to do? What motivates us to step back and watch somebody else do what God called you to do? How many times have I told you? You can touch more people than I can. Because your friends don't want the pastor. They want you. And if I can teach you. And you take what I've given you. And you use it. You're going to see great and mighty things in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are motivated as this. And what's the reason that we need to church, set the church on fire? Because we need to understand the reason why this is going to happen. Because Jesus Christ came to seek the lost, we said last week. To the one that is a sinner lost without Jesus Christ, he says, I want everybody to get saved. He said, I have come to you, I have life and have an abundance. I want everyone to come into redemption. That is God's desire. That's what he wants. But then I said, it's not only the lost outside of the church. It's the lost inside the church. How many people come on Sunday mornings and they're lost without Jesus Christ? They know where the church is at. They even sing the song with us. Sometimes even shed a tear. They're convinced but not converted. There's still things of the world that they want to do. There's these things they want to partake of and call it advancement in society, what do you want to call it? Things have changed, but God hasn't changed. And that's what the greatest passion is. I think that the church is going to have a revival aside from winning souls that don't know Jesus Christ, the ones that know him get to find out who he really is. You find him as your Lord and Savior. You find him as the best friend of your life. And when your world gets turned upside down like mine has, you don't turn on him. You go to the one that made the world, the one that created everything, and you say, I know you're in control. The world is upside down, but I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on because of the promise I have in you. And once I fulfill my promise in you, then I can go out and touch the lives of those that sit in my congregation, the ones that watch through Facebook. Maybe, maybe sitting there at home, watching this video later on today, but whatever circumstances, you've had knowledge of God. You have served God at one time. That power and passion is gone from your life. I challenge you to reinstate your relationship with Jesus Christ. To come back to the foot of the cross. To come back to your beginning. To come to understand there's nobody more lost than the one that doesn't realize that he's lost. There's too many people that call themselves Christians that are lost. And it's hard to admit that we're wrong. We don't like to be told we're wrong. And see, in these messages I'm going to bring it to you, it's like old school. Pastor, sure what do you mean by old school? There's a message along that line, but let me just give a little heads up, okay? When you come to church, to this church, uh, to these messages, you're not going to come to hear what you want to hear. You're going to come what you need to hear in order to get your life right with the Lord Jesus Christ. People, the important, most important mission to all the world listen to this message is your eternity. I can't decide it for you. You have to decide it for yourself. You have choices to make in life. And as you sit there and you listen to the challenge today, I tell you before you reach out and touch anybody else's life, before you touch anybody else or anybody else, make sure that your life is right with God. For we're here today, and we're gone tomorrow. We really don't know. We, we might not even be around for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We'll have to face eternity, and we better be ready. And ready means find the peace of Jesus that surpasses all understanding. And the only one that knows. I'm not here to call you out. I'm just here to challenge you. I'm not here to point fingers. I'm here to awaken within you. The passion to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, and Christ is going to be needs to be served as a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I promise you, 
You make a commitment 100% to God and watch God do his thing. And you might say, you really, Pastor? Look little bit's happening to you. <laughs> but I'm not be. No. We haven't lost this thing. It's just a stepping stone that people might see that God's still on the stone. Amen. And his name is still going to be glorified. When it's all said and done, God is using different venues to show his power and his glory. And we need to be big enough and mature enough to understand that victory is on its way. Because in Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors. you got to believe this. you got to live it. you got to practice it. And understand, there's nothing that can stop the progress of your walk with Jesus Christ. Nothing will stop it. The only one that can stop your progress is you. You. Not being determined to make a difference in your own life. Start with you. And then begin to reach out to touch the lives of the other people. That God would use as a vessel. So we get to, finally we're going to get to today's message. You ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go today's message. So how can I participate in this harvest? Oh, it's easy. You go to the Bible in the book of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 15. It's called the Great Commission. And the Bible said Jesus Christ is speaking. Now they have no idea that Jesus Christ is about to finish his ministry. He's just teaching. They're like sitting in church like we are today. They receive a message from him. And he looks forward to the things that are to come, the things that he wants. Because he knew he was leaving, but he had to leave a foundation, a challenge, a vision for people. He knew he would no longer physically be here to be seen. But his legacy would live on to the believers in Jesus Christ. And the scripture says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. That is our mission. That's how we can get involved. When I see this scripture, I love the way it begins. He says, And he said unto them, To who? Peter and John? To them only? The leaders of the church? No. He was talking to a multitude of people. He said, we're not going to reduce it to the, just the leaders. It's not just about what the leader of the church can do. It's about what you can do. Because the more you get involved in God's kingdom, the more you do for God, the greater love for God is and the greater faith you can have in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you get involved and just roll up the sleeves and begin to work for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ, God has called you to serve people. Not all of you are pastors. And God knows that we're not all singers. Not everybody's a teacher, but we are all vessels in the kingdom of God. You have a territory that you can touch with Jesus Christ. You have friends and relatives in need that touch the Lord Jesus Christ. And what God is saying, before we do anything else, I'm speaking to you. And he said unto them, to who? Everybody was there. You could stand and die. And he's saying, I'm saying to all of you, as I say to all the ones that are watching today. I say to all of you, there's a challenge from Jesus Christ unto your life. You might say, I'm not fluent. I don't know this or the other. God didn't ask you to be fluent. Johnny and I were having a talk last night. We had to plenty of time to talk to in the parking lot. And I said, you know, a lot of times the greatest welcome for the believers is this. Once you begin to talk to somebody, get into faith, talk to the light. With me, the way I do things, I don't carry around a two-ton Bible and beat people over the head with the Bible. We begin to talk, have a conversation. I won't, bring up, I won't bring up religion or faith until they do. And once they open, they're not coming out. Once, once they open the door, I'm coming in. But I'm going to make sure it's going to be in their, their turn. They open the door, and I'm coming in. Because once they open the door, they invited me, and here I come. Here I come. I said, you know what? And they can argue Bible with you. They can argue Scripture with you. And if you don't have a lot of doctrinal knowledge, a lot of basic, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all freaked out. Maybe that's what you're going to do. Well, Pastor, I don't know the, the plan of salvation. I don't know the road of Romans to show the people. I don't know the scripture to show the people. You know what the greatest testimony is to win souls for Jesus Christ? Let me show you what it is. The Bible is a foundation, but the greatest testimony is your testimony. See, they can't deny what Christ has done in your life. This is your life. You have a story to tell. You can talk about all the How many have been blessed by God? How do we receive great things from God in our lives? We have great testimonies to give. Why are we letting negative things be more important than positive things? We're in the midst of a tremendous lack of faith in people. And instead of focusing on what God can do or say like, Oh man, poor us. What's the next for our lives? Come on, people. Wake up and smell the coffee. Stand up for the virtues of Jesus Christ. Come understand we're not a bunch of weak. If you're going to battle, you're going to get ready to battle. Because you're not going to fight against flesh and blood. 
but against the spirit. But the Lord says, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And what you know God, and what you just touch your life, and what you do, you can do. Man, you're going to walk in with authority and knowing what I speak about. I'm not speaking religion. I'm not speaking about my church. I'm speaking of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm going to share with you the power of a God that created all that exists. And as He stood in creation where there was nothing and made what we have today, yet I am thoroughly convinced of who Jesus Christ is. I am thoroughly convinced now because the Bible says it. I have experienced it within my life. People, as you listen to this, you're alive because you've experienced the touch of God. In some way or some manner, God has shown His love unto you. And you have a commitment to God to say, Oh, I said thank you. No, you want to thank Jesus Christ? Go win somebody for Christ. Amen. We're going to show they really appreciate what he's done for your life. Show him through actions. Anybody can talk. Anybody can talk. But it's people that move have been great things for God. Because see, the next thing in that scripture that's important, and here we go. You ready? He says, go. Stop. That's it. Says, no. Go. Go. He didn't say they're going to come, Daisy. He didn't say people are going to come. He said, you're going to go. You're going to go. It's a decision you have to make. If you have really received from God what you need from God in your life, you need to go. You need to take the initiative to stand up what you believe in. And to believe with all your heart that whoever is next to you and needs that, you have the answer for their life. Don't sit there and say, well, if they need me, let them come to me. Why? If you have the answer. If we have some of the shares of our lives, man, many of us are good about reading body languages. You can see when they're down. Yeah. Well, they can come and shake their hand. Uh, they're not supposed to, but they will. <laughs> and look upon their eyes, and you can tell something's wrong. Or, oh, oh, I am blessed, really. And I hate to see you when you're down. See? We have a responsibility to God's creation, to God's crown of his creation. Because man fell from grace. Jesus came and died as man for us. That we might have life and have enough on us. He rose from the dead. That we have into our hands the ability to go. Don't go. Don't sit here and say, expect people to come in. Just go get up. Just find a way. Go is goes in so many different ways. There's one thing, like I said, we had a long conversation yesterday. We had time to talk a lot, Johnny. I said, you know, people, a lot of times the greatest testimony you'll ever have is the way you lead your life. That's going to open up doors. If you live a Christian life and you respect what you believe in, that's good enough to open the door. To touch the lives of people. See, the goal in your life is first of all your testimony. Because people are watching. People are watching. Let me tell you. If you have unsafe family members or friends and you do one of the bad things your Christian is not supposed to do, isn't the first thing they say, Christians don't do that. They're watching. They're watching. Your first goal, your first goal in your commitment to the gospel of Jesus Christ is your testimony. Your ability to open the door to people that they might see Jesus in you. Remember a few weeks ago I preached to you about when uh, the beautiful gate they built the most of the work, the miracle, and instead of rewarding, they were called before the council. And the council was a bunch of educated they all had their doctors and theology all kinds of stuff. And when Peter and John walked in, they looked and said, well, this is a fisherman. These guys don't have a lot of education. Read it in the scripture. In the book of Acts, chapter number four, it tells you. And they looked upon and they saw they, they were not men with a lot of education. But you know what it said in the scripture? It says, but they could see and they knew they had been with Jesus. People that people might know that you've been with Jesus. Did you make a difference in the lives of people? Because Jesus made a difference in your own life. To go is to take what God has given you and run with it. And share it with people. And give it to people that they might understand. They're not going to come. You have to go find them. Now, if I were to tell you that in one of these chairs, and it isn't, so don't be turning chairs over, please. <laughs> I were to say that in one of these chairs, we put a check for a hundred bucks. Well, there's a treasure that you can go look for. Like, oh, oh and I got the delivery because it, for anybody who wants it, there's a treasure there. Well, see, what I'm trying to relate is this. That hundred bucks in God's kingdom means this. That's God's treasure, the souls that we want for his kingdom. It cost him his life. You found him. 
He's your Lord and Savior. But why keep him to yourself? Why are you watching family members and friends go to hell without Jesus Christ? We have the opportunity. And Jesus said, go. Go. Go into all the world. Oh, check that one out. Into all the world. It doesn't say sin in your church. Go into all the world. Anybody can be a Christian in church. And everybody said, good, amen. amen. Anybody can be a good Christian in church. Christianity is proven outside of the walls of the church. That's what he puts it. Get out there. Get out there where the people are hurting. Get out there where there's needs upon the people. Go out into the world. I mean, let's not get into this exclusive little club that, oh, we're the church. Oh, we don't stand. We're the people. People get with a program here. It really, really bothers me to see a lot of churches to get, we got it all and they got nothing. You criticize, stop this. Wake up and understand. The only one that has it all is Jesus Christ. And when you have him, then you got, you're got you going in the right direction. It's about standing up, going out into the world, making an exception of nobody as people cross your path. And you've had this maybe happen already in your life that someone's there and God says, speak to them. I don't even know. Speak to him. If you feel that urge, don't waste a moment. For you never know that person will have another chance to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Aren't you blessed because you can come? Well, you used to be able to come every Sunday. But aren't you blessed that you can go to church, amen? Amen. And you've heard how many sermons of Pastor Martinez. The rays have heard all 50 years. The dad. Not the son. But the dad, I mean, brothers that have been here for all 50 some years, like 48 that have been with their most I've heard a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of messages in their lives. But the bottom line is, what are we doing with it today? That's what we need to understand. That as we go out to touch the lives of people, there's people that need that surround us. You think you're bad, you ought to see somebody else's life. Quit moping. Come on, people. How many serve a powerful God? Amen. How many serve a God that can meet all our needs? Amen. Then don't sit around and move. Stand on the promises of God. Go for the determination that God's will is going to be done. And His word is not going to come back void. You and I live in a generation totally different too many years ago. You know when I first came here to La Hermosa? It started down in the slab. You would go to the house and some houses sat on the door. Some of you don't remember this, you're too young for this, but they had a sign on there that says, this is a Catholic code, we not accept uh, Protestant literature here. And sometimes, I mean, I got a chance, I come door anyway, and got received by the God, and I'm like, oh, God. We're not at that time anymore. People are asking left and right. People are asking, they are, they're hungry. And especially now, they're desperate. They're desperate. Oh, I hear the traditional, well, if there's a God, why is God allowing all this to happen? <laughs> because we sin. We're paying for our sin. That's not him. That's us. That's us. And then he gave us the power to be within it and still be it. To be his representative. That's what it's all about. It's not that God can't. It's not that God won't. He's respecting everybody's free will. If you want to live that way, you'll pay for it. But the moment we come back to Christ, we get on our knees and we seek God in our lives, Amen. you're going to see great things happen. Amen. Revival is coming to those who are willing to go out into the world. Shine in the darkness. Let them understand in the midst of all the chaos, God is still the answer. He says, go preach the gospel. Don't preach your religion. Don't fight religion. When you fight religion, nobody wins. Let me tell you something. If you and I get into a discussion on religion, you're not going to beat me. Because even though you have a very big argument, let me say it in Spanish. Me subo mi burro y no me abajas. I'm so determined to do it. I'm going to sit there and you're not going to beat me because that's who I am. How many heard this? Well, that's when my mother left me. That's when my grandparents left me. All right? And I tell people, really, how so that you're going to be shivered before you drive me in the car? But that's another story for another time. See, we need to understand that we believe in Jesus Christ, we have the power to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, embrace the who Jesus Christ is, and come to understand that what the people need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
People, there's power in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's authority. That word is like a two-edged that sword is going to penetrate right into the hearts of people. What you can't do with all your philosophy, with all your trickery, with all your gift of gab, what you can't do with that, you can do with God's word because there's power in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you as believers need to use that weapon of the Lord David. But Pastor, we're going to battle and I don't know how to fight. Get the sword, man. Get the sword. Fight with the sword God gave you. Come to understand that sword represents victory because it is bathed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The bloody shed on Calvary is the is a premise, the power behind that authority. And he was given a name that is above all names. You don't go in the name of Temple that Boss or Pastor Martinez. You go in the name of Jesus Christ Almighty. Understanding that the battle belongs to the Lord. We stand and told commitment to God. For God said, You go into all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel. Not your philosophy. Not your mindset. What Jesus promised. Don't go promising what God didn't promise. Because then people are going to fall out on their faces. But when you stay within the Word and meet the conditions of the Word and teach what the promise of God is and the fulfillment thereof, then it's going to happen. Once we do it, like God wants us to do it, educate your people. You get an education of the Word of God. Meet the commitment, meet the conditions of the promises of God, and God will open the windows of heaven and pour out His Spirit in a dynamic way. But God is waiting for you to make a choice and to say, okay, my friend needs it. I know the minds of many people, oh, you know, Pastor, I don't want to offend anybody. Well, don't offend them, but the day they stand in judgment, they look at you and say, hey, you got the answer, and you didn't tell me. What are you going to do on Judgment Day when family members go before the throne and be cast in the hell because you didn't take the time to make a difference in their lives? You had the answer. We had the answer. To share a relationship with Jesus Christ. People, let's learn something. If nothing else, learn this. Don't teach a condemning God. Teach a reachable Christ. A Christ of love and forgiveness. If they don't accept, then judgment comes. But let's do it for the right reasons. Let's not go out and win souls because they're afraid to go to hell. Let's go out and win souls because they love the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they love the Lord Jesus Christ, then they're going to fall by the wayside. Let's so stay strong in their commitment. And it says, teach this to who? Everybody. No exceptions. Every family has a one they call the black sheep. How many understand that? Yeah. Black sheep. You could be white as snow, but you're the black sheep. You got a bad testimony in your family. I guess I'm the black sheep because of color in my family. But every, no, every family has that one kid. They say, hey, everybody, but not that one, man. That one is really not going to do it. I will have told you. When I talk to people, they say, oh, don't talk about that. Leave me alone. Brother. Those are the best Christians. They make the best Christians in the world. Why, Pastor? Because the day they accept Jesus Christ, they're going to be as committed to Christ as they are to not believe. They may. So don't give up. You're not going to save them. The Word of God is going to save them. What you share with them is going to save them. It's not you. Well, what do I tell them that they don't accept? Guess what? That's their problem. Because it's all been written down. The moment you share with that friend into their biography, and heaven is written down on such and such a day, so and so told you about Jesus, and you said no. Because when you want to know, why didn't I make it? On that day, you were told, and you said no. To those who are here or watching, I ask you, do you have Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life? Because today I'm giving you that opportunity to come to Jesus Christ, to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not asking you to accept the Philip Mosa or Pastor Martinez. I'm offering the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The one that gave his life on Calvary that you might have life and have an abundance. The one that's not calling you out to condemn you, but to save you. He came and gave his life that you might have an abundant life. And to go through this chaotic moment in your life, I want you to look to Jesus. Give him a chance. Look, you've tried it so many different ways. And look where you're at. Look where you're at. There's no peace. There's no harmony. There's no purpose. There's no desire in your life. You're just like hanging in there. Let's get a life. And the life Jesus said, 
I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Don't look down on people. No. You can't look down on somebody because according to you, they don't meet your standards. No. How many know that Jesus died for all of them? He died for the prostitute, for the drug addict, for the drug dealer, for the drunkard, and for the church folk. He died for all of us. He didn't make an exception. It really didn't matter to him. We're the ones. We're the ones that are all not out of like, oh my God. So and so comes to my church. Oh, how embarrassing to have somebody come out of They see me walk out of the church and this guy used to be a big old drunk. He walked behind me. Man, that is so embarrassing. Really? When a big old drunkard gets saved and the whole body, the whole city knows about him, and he walks out of your church with a blue on his face, you know there's power in Jesus Christ. Amen. You know you reached out to touch everyone. That you went to the gutter because that's where he went for you. For as long as you were a sinner, you were in the gutter. And he reached down to you. Do you have the courage? Do you have the love enough to reach down to somebody in this hurting today? Because see, how can I contribute to this great harvest of souls? How can I do it? By going out and touching the lives of people. They will not come on their own. You need to bring them. You need to make the time to do great things in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's gone a lot longer than what I wanted this morning. So let me just paraphrase this real quick to finish up so I can go to the next of the five messages. A lot of people say, well, a lot of people are teaching and preaching. Who has the truth? You ever heard that one before? What church has the truth? Jesus has the truth. And you know what he said? Do you know what he said about the true believer? Here it goes. These are the conditions. <laughs> These are the conditions. You're going to see upon the sick as you lay their hands and they're going to be healed, the Bible says. That's part of the real church. They will speak in new tongues. That is part of the real church. They will cast out demons. That is part of the real church. That's not what, that's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus said. These are the conditions that will define the true church. When you find a church that believes in this thing and are doing these things, then you found the answer. I didn't say you found the perfect church. I said you found the answer of what Jesus wanted for a church. You found that he set the conditions. I didn't set them for you. He did. He did. You go. Mark 16, 15 is a call to do his work. 16 and 17 are the signs that will follow those that believe. When you see these signs, that's the one you follow. That's the one you're after. That's the one that's fulfilling what God has for the lives. And I had a whole deal about the difference between miracles and divine healing and things like Maybe I should do it next week to make sure I get you really prepared for this man. But I think it's very important that you understand. It's not the name of the church in the building or the denomination you represent. The true church is defined by the owner of the church and it was Jesus. Jesus gave his life on Calvary. So he has the right to say what goes and what doesn't go. And you look at verses 16 and 17 of the book of Mark. Mark 16, 16 and 17. You're going to find what Jesus said is the true church. When you see these things manifested in those people, you found the answer. You found the answer. Place yourself there. And then do what? Do what they're doing. Word miracles, pray for the sick, speak in new tongues. Do all the things that are there. And you're part of what Jesus wanted for the true church. See, it's not conditions of passion of things. It's what the, it's what the Bible says of the believer in Jesus Christ. You gotta call people. We have a mission. This is the Sunday of victory. There's a time that I don't care where you're at. Man, I got people watching in Washington State, Washington, California, Interior, Mexico. We get messages from all over the world receiving these messages. And I challenge wherever you're at, I challenge you, make this your day of victory. And you might say, and I know the mindset they told me for. 
Pastor, how can you stand to be so positive when you're going through such a great deal in your own personal life? When you're facing the adversity you're having to face, your mom on her deathbed, your wife in the hospital with a stroke, how can you do this? Because I know that my Redeemer is. Amen. I know that he's in control of all things. And if I take care of him, he's going to take care of me. Amen. I believe it. I live it. I preach it. And I give it to you. My friend, it's time. It's time to refocus. To commit. To find the answer. To stand on the rock with Jesus Christ. To remove all doubt from your mind. To remove all fear from your life. To start doing what God called you to do. And when you do these things, the windows of heaven are going to open. And God's going to power his spirit and his power and his authority, his strength, his companionship. You will never, never, never walk alone. People will walk away from you. Your family can walk away from you. Church people will walk away from you. But Jesus will never walk away. And that's what this is about, people. It's not about Pastor Martinez. It's about Jesus. I can't be in Washington. I can't be in Florida, in these different places that this world is going to. I can't be there. But my friend, my Savior, my hero, he's there. He's there. There's no doubt in my mind who I serve and who I teach, and what I believe in. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Find him, find him, have hope and determination. So when you're watching on video, or you're here in the congregation today, if you believe this message was for you, this will challenge your life to do great things for God. You're gonna quit sitting down and feeling sorry for yourself, and start doing what God called you to do. I want to pray for warriors today. People are willing to say, you know, Pastor, I'll take a stand. I'll make a commitment. I'll get my stuff going. I'll be going. I'll be doing something for God. I'm going to get in it right away. I'm not going to wait for Easter Sunday or Mother's Day or Father's Day. I'm going to get it going right now in my commitment to Jesus. If that is your desire, whether you're here in the congregation or you're watching, wherever you're at, I want you to stand. I want to pray with you this morning. Or is it the grace of God? The God that is with me is giving my strength during my trying times will be your God. That he will come today and just deliver you. And bring unto you that which you need for your life to move forward. With the determination in your heart who Jesus Christ is. And to know beyond a shadow of doubt that you were called. That you were called. With all your deficiencies, with all your faults, you were called. With all my faults, all my divisions, I was called. And look what God is going to do. So in the precious name of Jesus Christ, come on, put your life where God can touch you. Believe it. Believe it. And totally up to you if you want to. You don't have to. I never obligate people to do something. It's got to come from your heart. As a sign of surrender to God, you want to raise your hand and say, it's me, God, you do that. It's me, it's me, God, it's me. We're going to pray. It's only if you want to. The sign of surrender, God, I'm here. God, would you minister to my life? Heavenly Father, because of who you are. Because the power vested in us through the gospel of Jesus Christ. For the calling place upon every individual to the word of God. We stand on your promises, believing that your word will not come back void. I have delivered a challenge to those present and those watching over Facebook. And later in the day, the ones who will watch over YouTube, Lord. I deliver the message of power and authority. We break the bondage in the lives of believers. We break the bondage of those that have not found Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. We come in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, embracing the truth of who you are, trusting you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. Heavenly Father, we're sorry. We're sorry for having failed you. We're sorry for not having been totally committed to what you called us to do. But from today forward, I can change that. And today is a day of change. 
an opportunity to go forward, an opportunity to change circumstances of life, an opportunity to look forward to what you have for our life. And God, I pray for everyone that is in this place and those that are watching, that the grace of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, and the healing hand of Jesus would be extended in their way. And they might know, yes, it's been 2,000 years, but you're still the same yesterday, today, and forever. So in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we declare victory. I pray that everyone that is with me right now and this prayer begin to declare victory. To tell you, Jesus, I have victory this morning. I have victory this morning in the precious name of Jesus Christ because of who you are, because what you represent to my life. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. People tell him, declare your victory. Come on. Declare your victory this morning. To say, yes, God, I believe in this morning. I believe in this morning that this was mine. This was mine this morning. God was speaking to my life. I have a job to do, not for a pastor, but for Jesus. I have a job to do for Jesus. And for many years I've been in church, but never did the job. I just took care of my life, made sure I made it to heaven. And never took the time to touch the lives of those that are around me that are hurting. They need the gospel of Jesus Christ. Teach, preach, live the gospel. And the word will not come back void because of who he is. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. It's because of who he is. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. Believe. Heavenly Father, your grace, your power, your anointing, the leading of the Holy Spirit, which has come and touched those who are reaching out to you. I thank you, God, for the strength. I thank you, God, for your companionship. I know I'm surrounded by many warriors. I feel their love. I feel their, their prayers. They stand with me in this trying time. But most of all, I feel you. I know you. I know who you are. And I want them to find you like I found you. I want people to experience or have experienced. And as time goes by, it only gets better. It only gets better. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your covenant with us. Speak to God this morning. He didn't have a deaf ear. He's listening. I've always taught God will never reject a repentant heart. He will not. People might turn their back on you, but God will not. He listens to your prayer. Be strong. Be strong. And for all those watching on Facebook, YouTube, I'll see you Wednesday in the Bible class. The ones the church we stick out of to go to finish. But thank you for the ones that are watching. God bless you. God bless you for supporting our ministry. God be with you. And we, we update the condition of my wife through Facebook or our page. I'll let you know what's going on. God bless you. Thank you so much.